Welcome back, my fellow radiation nerds. Today, we will explore the radioactivity of a noble gas that is the second leading cause of lung cancer, radon-222. During my recent trip to the United States, I visited a couple of famous uranium mining sites, including Mivida and Cotter Mines. There, I have collected a few samples of the local uranium minerals, and while the radiation coming from those samples might be a bit high when measured up close, it is important to remember that those are point sources, and with distance, the activity quickly drops back to normal levels. Furthermore, the plastic boxes I keep the samples in prevent the spread of any particles and pieces that might have fallen off the main mineral. However, what concerns me is not the radiation coming from the uranium minerals, but the gas emitted by them, called radon. Radon-222 is a naturally occurring radioactive element, with an atomic number of 86. It is part of the uranium decay chain, directly being produced by the decay of radium-226. It was first identified in 1899 by Ernest Rutherford and Robert B. Owens at the McGill University in Montreal, making it the fifth radioactive element to ever be discovered. It has a half-life of 3.8 days, and it decays into polonium-218 through an alpha emission, with an activity of 5.67 petabecquerels. What makes radon particularly dangerous is its possible buildup inside of buildings, as it escapes from underground as a result of natural uranium decay. Its detection is challenging, as radon is a noble gas, and it doesn't have any smell, taste or color, and can only really be detected using specialized equipment. This results in radon gas being one of the leading causes of lung cancer, second only to smoking cigarettes. Furthermore, radon decay products can easily attach themselves to anything they come in contact with. This includes clothes, different surfaces, and lungs if inhaled. While the half-life of radon is only 3.8 days, it decays into toxic heavy metals, including polonium, thallium, and lead. This means that if inhaled, these elements will remain in the lungs and eventually be absorbed by the body. In some countries, radon tests are mandatory for residential and public buildings, and the levels should generally not exceed 300 becquerels per cubic meter, although WHO recommends to keep the levels below 100 becquerels per cubic meter, and EPA recommends action if the radon levels exceed 148 becquerels per cubic meter. If you have a ventilation system with air filters inside of your building, you can do a simple experiment and check the filters for radon using a Geiger counter. I did that at my parents' place, and their filters clearly showed increased levels of radiation. This is perfectly normal and should be nothing to worry about as long as the radon levels inside of the building are within the recommended limits. A gamma spectroscopy of an active carbon sample that has been exposed to radon gas shows an interesting spectrum. While it is similar to uranium or radium spectrum, it clearly misses few peaks from isotopes found higher in the decay chain. Here's a gamma spectrum of a uranium ore sample for comparison. As you can see, the peaks from uranium-235 at 144 keV and radium-226 at 186 keV are missing. Now you may wonder, I have a Geiger counter, can't I use it to measure radon? Well, technically yes but it's actually a little bit more complicated than that. While a Geiger counter can detect radiation coming from radon and its decay products, it is not ideal tool for detection of radon gas or measuring its concentration. In order to do that, a dedicated radon meter must be used, which is specifically designed for this purpose and will give precise long-term measurements, which are essential for evaluating potential health risks from radon exposure. In order to keep track of the radon levels at my home, I reached out to the amazing guys over at Aranet, who have kindly provided me with their Radon Plus and background radiation meters, which we have inspired and made this video possible. The meters look great and have very nice elegant design, and they both use e-ink displays, which I'm personally a big fan of as it looks fantastic and consumes very little energy, allowing them to run for multiple years on just two AA batteries, which come included in the box. The initial setup and connecting the meters to the RNet phone app was a piece of cake, and the app allows you to get much more insight about the data being recorded. Both meters are fairly compact and have the same width and height, however they do differ in their depth, as the Radon Plus meter uses an ionization chamber, which requires extra room compared to the pin diode detector used by the background radiation meter. 
If you want to learn more about those meters, make sure to check out the Aronet website or the YouTube channel. Coming back to my concern about the Raiden levels, after setting up both meters I allowed them to run for a few days so that they could calculate an average measurement. When I checked the Aronet app, I saw that the readings for Raiden concentration were around 30 becquerels per cubic meter, depending on the time of the day and the background radiation hovered at around 0.1 microsievert an hour, which is more than acceptable and within the recommended limits. Realistically, having just a few small uranium minerals should not cause any significant increase in radon levels, but I'll continue to monitor the readings just in case, especially since winter is coming and ventilating my home isn't as easy as in summertime. Although I haven't measured any significant levels of radon at my home, this might not be true for everyone. If your levels are elevated, the easiest solution is to simply ventilate the room more often. In some extreme cases, a more drastic measures have to be taken, which can include sealing off the basement floor or installing an active ventilation system, but I recommend consulting a specialist first before taking any action. If you're a collector of uranium minerals, radium watches or other items that can produce radon gas, a radon meter is definitely a must. This being said, if you live in an area that is known to have high levels of radon concentration, investing in a radon meter is definitely a good idea. The team at Aronet has also provided me with a special discount code for all the viewers of the channel. So if you decide to buy a meter from Aronet, make sure to enter all rat 5 at checkout, which will give you additional 5% off from your order. Alternatively, you can also use one of the links in the video description. Thank you Aronet once again for providing me with the meters and making this video possible. I'm curious to hear about your experiences with Raiden. Do you live in a higher Raiden area? Do you use a Raiden meter? And how do you control the levels at your home? Let me know in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and learned something new. If yes, please consider giving it a like and subscribing to my channel so you don't miss any of the upcoming content. Also feel free to check out my coffee page where you can donate a nice cup of radioactive coffee and support my work financially. And remember, stay active.